<clears throat> okay, today I'm going to show you how to make um, air release dies. Um, this is a special press, a special, uh, it's a special type of t a tile pressing that really can uh, increase your production uh, greatly, can allow you to make lots of tiles of one design. Um, you know, it, it, uh, it, it just, uh, it's a, um, uh, it's the next step you take in your tile business if you want to start growing uh, in, into a larger, um, into a larger, uh, you know, economic uh, business that uh, is going to create more business for you. So, <clears throat> um, these metal die rings can also be made out of wood. Um, you can make them square. I have a press over here that they fit on. Um, you don't have to use a press. You can, you can hand pack clay into these molds when you make them. Uh, it's not as they don't they don't turn out as nice as on the press because there's so much pressure with that press that it just packs the clay in really tight. Um, and uh, they have a better they come out cleaner. So um, what's really neat about this whole process is that um, you're using air pressure you're using air pressure to um, pop these tiles out of these molds and you can make them one after the other instead of having to wait like a traditional way for the tile to uh, loosen up and fall out of the plaster mold. Um, so uh, I have the ability to carve a tile. It takes about a half an hour to an hour to make one of these uh, dies and then I can have the die ring on the machine pressing tiles and you know an hour and a half after I make the mold even less than that. So I, it, uh, you know normally you have to wait for a plaster mold to dry for a few you know, a couple weeks, unless you want to risk putting it into an oven. So, um, <clears throat> to do this, the, the, the whole the, the whole principle of the whole this whole process is that you're in, you're embedding this special tubing inside of this special high strength plaster, and then this this tubing remains. Um, it remains porous. Uh, the plaster can't get into the inside the tube, but air pressure can be forced into the tube after the the mold hardens. And then that uh, there's there's small microscopic pores in the plaster that are that the air is forced through, allowing that tile to pop out of the mold. So the trick is is to is to learn how to put these these a coil of this tubing inside of this, and then pour the plaster. Um, so what I have here is some like. What I have here is some garden wire, and then this is uh, some construction mesh, wire mesh. Okay, so what we're going to do is, is we're going to start by getting a few of these. You know, so you take a few pieces of this wire mesh, and you just you uh, hold your... This, this is called mold duct tubing. Um, it's not easy to find. I mean, it's 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 on it's Google that you'll find it, but there's not a lot of people that sell it. So um, uh, there's a there's two kinds. There's a there's a cloth fabric kind, and then there's this polyester kind of um, synthetic fiber kind. This is <clears throat> this is much cheaper than the cloth kind, but it's it's a little bit tricky to use, and you have to you have to um, some tricks in using this because because the plaster does seep into this one so um, I have a trick in to, to allow the plaster to stay out out of it and I will show you that in a minute here so you just you just you just take your wire and you just uh, wrap it around the um, You you, uh, you attach the mold duct tubing to this mesh. This is really easy. If you ever if you ever used this garden wire before, it's just it's really easy to. Um, typically, you want to keep this piece of mold duct tubing out about an inch. Um, again, 
<clears throat> when you when you when we end up putting this inside of the mold, uh, you know we can move it a little bit if we need to. Okay. <clears throat> Sometimes I'll make several of these in advance so that they're all ready to go. Um, so what you do is, is you just uh, need some new clips. You just coil this around this mesh and you uh, you try to keep it about an inch away uh, you, you keep the tubing you keep to co coiling it around and you keep the tubing about an inch away from you know you keep it about an inch away from the tube see right there about an inch um, but that doesn't really matter what, what's most important is that you just coil it all the way around uh, make it look like one of like one of those old-fashioned they're old-fashioned now maybe this you know like one of those like your stove if you uh, so, you know, sometimes older stoves have the coil you set the hot pan on the, on the coal coiled element kind of make it look like that so we're just spinning this around <clears throat> The first time I ever ever did, made these, and it took a while for me to really figure this out. It's not. I taught myself how to do this. There was this old-fashioned manual that I have that I bought with my, that came with my press, but um, but it was really really old, and it was not very easy to understand. So, um, it took me a few times, but then I figured it out, and um, now I'm pretty good at making these. No problem. Uh, no problems. Um, so there's definitely something you have to learn to do. Um, you're going to have to kind of mess up a few times to figure out how to do it, I think. But um, it's, it's, this is like really, this is really cool and, and fun and exciting when you start to when you when you learn how to make these, and then you can see the potential that it brings to your business. Um, one of the one of the things that I'm excited to do is when I, um, especially in Norway, if there's ever if there's any ever any art students or anyone who's or any ceramicists, there's not very many tile tile makers in Norway, but if there are anyone that wants to learn how to do this, I would like that'd be really cool to show people how to do it. Um, I don't know. I'm one of these artists that like I, I like to share because I feel like I'm I'm uh, definitely confident in my work, and I'm not really worried about. Um, people taking away my business. Um, so, uh, I, I believe, I believe, I believe that karma is going to win over every time. I truly believe in karma. So I, I like to show people how to do this stuff and, um, it's fun. So I hope that people learn that I know how to, I have the equipment and know how to do this and I can show them, um, how cool it is. Uh, I heard you can buy this mold duct tubing in Norway, but um, I didn't get the I didn't get the you know I didn't get the feeling that it's widely used. So um, this is a skill that I have that uh, is kind of unique and. Um, and like I said. I would love to show people how to do this stuff. And there's all kinds of things that you can you can learn. Um, you can expand this this pro, this ability this uh, technique. You can make you can you can start making molds for plates, for cups. Um, there's there's a lot of possibilities. Okay, so I'm almost done here.
Okay, so basically when you're done, you kind of want it to look like this. Like that. I have used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pieces of of this wire, garden wire. So um, this is ready to be put into here. Um, but first we have to get this ready to have the plaster poured into it. And that'll be uh, the next oh, and that'll be the next um, video in this series. I think this will be like a three part, four part series. Um, it shows how to make these. So um, I'm going to uh, be back with part two in uh, just a minute.